So a couple months ago, my friends got me this Soji Rishi bread maker and I've been baking with it and I thought it would be a good time to do a video on everything about bread makers that I know and give you some tips on whether you should consider buying a bread maker, whether you shouldn't consider buying a bread maker, what they're good for, the whole shebang. My name's Rachel. I am an amateur baker, but I've been baking for almost like 20 years now. So this is my first YouTube video, so please be kind to me. But if that sounds interesting, stick around and we'll be going through everything you need to know about bread makers. Also be baking some bread so we can see what the product is and hopefully answer any of your questions. If you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment. I don't know everything. Again, this is more from someone who's only had a bread maker for a couple of months. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But this is this is my experience so far with the Zoji Rishi Maestro, I believe. So starting off with the basics, I don't know what model this is. It doesn't say on the outside. I mean, it has the number, it's the BBSSC10. It's a one pound capacity bread maker and that's something we'll get into in a little bit. But I also wanna say I didn't pay for this. I got it as a gift for my friends. So this isn't sponsored, anything like that. But, you know, again, I didn't pay for this personally. So my opinion is based off of just my experience with it. So starting off, like, what is a bread maker? I'm somebody who's baked bread from scratch for many, many years now. And I have to admit, I always kind of looked down on like convenience appliances like this. It felt like it was a machine made for people who didn't care to learn about like the craft of baking bread. But I've kind of gotten off my high horse and I've grown to really, really love this thing. So spoiler alert, I do absolutely love my bread maker, but I don't think it's for everybody. So I want to get into who I think it's good for, what I think it's good for and why. So just the basics A bread maker is a machine, obviously, that sits on your countertop. It has this little bucket inside and in the bucket, there's like a little post and you stick this little paddle attachment onto the post and you basically just dump all your ingredients for the bread in here and this machine does everything for you so it kneads the bread it proofs it at the right temperature and then it actually has heating coils inside kind of like a toaster oven or something and it actually bakes the bread in the machine for you so you can go from flour water and yeast to bread in just a couple of hours and it really takes the guesswork out of things for the most part. And again, I'll get into what I mean by that because there are some catches and caveats along the way as there always are, but at its base level, that's what a bread machine does. It's supposed to bake bread for you. Now, there are a lot of other uses for bread machines and I haven't tried every single one yet. But aside from baking normal loaves of bread, and that's everything from white bread to shokupan, the, the Japanese milk bread, to whole wheat, to everything in between, besides making actual loaves, you can also use this as basically just a kneading and proving machine, which I have used it for as well. The most recent case of that was making a smaller batch of cinnamon rolls. And it was really nice to be able to dump all my ingredients into the bucket set my rising and kneading times and then just walk away. I didn't have to think about it until it was time to shape the cinnamon rolls and you know fill them with cinnamon and then I move them to a separate pan and bake them off. So you can either use it for the full baking cycle or you can stop it after it proves and bake it in the oven. So for myself personally, what I really like about this machine um, is kind of a really specific use case, but I think it is probably relevant to a lot of people. I bake sourdough, so I kind of stopped for a while, but I, I've been baking sourdough for, I don't know, five years now or something like that. And just like all sourdough bakers, I think I'm always looking for ways to use my discard. So the discard is the you know bit of the starter that you throw away when you're feeding your starter. And that ends up, I'll show you. Oh. So every week or so I'll end up with this like full container of sourdough discard, which just looks like dough or goop a little bit. And it, it feels like a waste because it's perfectly good flour and water and yeast and all that stuff. My favorite way to use this is actually to offset my sourdough cycle. So I'll bake bowls, like those nice rustic loaves of sourdough about once a week or every other week. 
and every week to sometimes twice a week, I'll use the sourdough discard to make a smaller sandwich style loaf. And that's just our everyday bread that we'll make like toast with in the morning. And it's really helped me cut back on wasting my sourdough discard. I know there's tons of recipes like chocolate chip cookies and crackers. There's crackers that I really like making, but to be honest, I just love bread, which is why I love sourdough. So I would much prefer to have it be in bread form. And this absolutely makes that so much easier. So what are the overall benefits of having a bread machine? There's a few things. So first off, it's like easy, right? And I kind of said at the beginning that I looked down upon these machines before and maybe a little bit upon like the people who'd use them as being more amateur than me, which I've completely renounced that way of thinking. But I will say it does help those types of people out. So that is one type of bread machine user is somebody who just wants fresh bread, but doesn't care to like spend the time to figure out how to do it. And that's totally fine. Like if you want fresh bread and a lot of people I hear online, like grew up with fresh bread, right? Like their mom would bake it for them. So they like having fresh bread in the morning, but they don't want to dive into the art of bread making, so to speak. Great, that's great for those people. So it is easier. It's also, and I think this is the biggest selling point, it's hands off. Think of it in the same category as say your Instant Pot, right? Like the Instant Pot isn't doing anything revolutionary, it's heating up your soup under pressure, right? And you could buy a normal pressure cooker that goes on your stove top, or you could just slow cook something for hours and hours and hours. And what's interesting about the Instant Pot is you actually don't save much time considering like how much time it takes to bring the machine up to pressure and down from pressure. But what the Instant Pot does and why I love it is you don't have to think about it as much. You set it for some amount of time and then you walk away. And it's electric, so you don't really have to check on it. It's, it's more consistent in terms of temperature. Um, you don't have to worry about it like boiling over. There's a lot of things you just don't have to monitor. And that's what I think is the real strength of the bread maker is you don't have to keep monitoring whatever you're doing. I also think it is great kind of in the same vein as an air fryer, which I don't love air fryers, but they do have their benefits, mainly to me that, yes, an air fryer is basically a small oven, but that therefore means you don't have to heat up your oven, right? So in the summertime or just in general, if you don't want to like use all your, I have a gas stove and oven, if you don't want to use that gas or you don't want to heat up your house, um, which is kind of a commitment and, you know, takes time to preheat and all that. This is basically like a really tiny oven and reduces the heat output. Pretty sure it probably reduces the energy output. I don't want to say that for sure because I'm sure someone's going to come attack me, but I'm pretty confident that this is also like a lower energy usage overall. And the last thing I'll say as somebody who has been baking bread for quite a long time, so I've been baking sourdough for about five years, but I've been baking like, you know, bread, cinnamon rolls, loaves of bread, milk bread, all that stuff for over 10 years, well over 10 years. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, I'm sure somebody's gonna like drag me, but the texture of the bread that comes out of this machine is superior to anything I've made in my stand mixer. And I was talking to another friend who is also very into baking and who was very easily influenced to buy a bread maker when he saw mine. And our theory that we kind of worked out is this thing needs the dough at a slower and lower pace than I personally would on my bread machine. So even though I'm doing the window pane tests and checking to make sure the gluten's formed and all of that, I think there's something about the lower and slower kneading speed and longer kneading cycle that makes the bread have like a real true, almost like grocery store texture, which I know might sound bad, but in some ways when I'm making a sandwich loaf, that's the really soft pillowy texture that I want. I have not achieved those results with my standard stand mixer baking method, although I'm very certain it's possible, but it was just an interesting thing I learned. And that's not to say the bread that I made in the past didn't taste good. Like I didn't even know that it wasn't quite the best texture it could be until I started using the bread machine. So that was a big realization I had and um, I love this thing for it. Now let's talk about some of the downsides. A lot of what I've said so far is a double-edged sword. So the set it and forget it thing is great, but, but the reason that you can set it and forget it is that 
the recipes made for bread machines have been tuned to the bread machine. So you have to really be confident in the recipe to make sure that it works in the bread machine. And the reason I say that is when you set it and forget it, you're not monitoring it, which is a, a bonus. But what that means is you don't as frequently check and see if it needs a little more flour or a little more water or a little bit more of this or that, which I definitely do when I'm baking without the bread machine. So that is definitely a double-edged sword. I've had a couple recipes come out. I won't call them flops because like the bread was still delicious afterwards, but the loaf was a little misshapen or you could definitely tell there's a little bit too much liquid or a little bit, you know, not enough liquid or there are a couple dry spots in the bread. So you might end up with these like slight defects because the recipe isn't perfect. And as with all bread making, your local climate and the weather can really affect the bread itself. So in LA, it's been uncharacteristically humid because of all the rain. And I've been noticing that my bread recipes that normally work perfectly for me have been too wet a lot of times. So I've had to add a lot more flour. And that's come back to bite me with the bread machine a couple times. You can open this thing while it's while it's making bread, that, that's not an issue. But I just don't because I'll just be <laughs> sitting on my couch watching TV shows or something like that. So something to keep in mind. The next thing is a really big thing for me and I'm still deciding how I feel about it because I think again, it's a double-edged sword and it's the low capacity of the machine. This is a one pound bread maker, this, this model specifically. And it's quite a big machine, but as you can see, the bucket is pretty small and this is the size of the loaf. It's mostly just two of us eating the bread here. So I don't super mind it. And, and what it means is that we end up eating all the bread before it goes stale every single time, but also means we only have basically two days of bread or so every time I, I use this thing. And I don't know how I feel about it, but it is a low capacity. There are bigger, higher capacity machines, one and a half and even two pound machines. The machine obviously is bigger in that case, but my friend, who I said I influenced to buy one of these accidentally. His is a two pound capacity bread maker, I believe, and it's like kind of a vintage Zojirushi. And he's been pumping out like full size loaves or like smaller, but like true, true loaves. So maybe consider getting a bigger one, especially if you have a, a family of more than two. But if you're a single person, this is like actually, I think much better than baking bread in the oven because if you're one person, you just want like a small loaf, you can crank them out. Also, I have to call it the elephant in the room. This is a mostly single application appliance and many of us have a ton of those already. I have an espresso machine. It only makes espresso. I have an espresso grinder. It only grinds espresso beans. I have, you know, my stand mixer on the countertops. I'm just looking around. Um, you know, like I said, people have air fryers. It falls into that category of being sort of a single application appliance. So unless you're very passionate about bread like I am, it might not be worth the counter space, basically. It definitely is redundant with your other products, especially if you have a stand mixer and an oven. You can do everything that a bread maker does with your stand mixer and oven. So it definitely is redundant, but it's a huge convenience if that's something you care a lot about. So it's just something you have to decide for yourself whether it's worth the space. And I'm going to be honest, I probably wouldn't have ever bought it, but because it was gifted to me, I was pretty excited about it. It's one of those, it, I think that makes for a really good gift, by the way, is if the person receiving the gift would not buy it themselves, but ultimately likes it, that's how I feel about the machine. I will say though, the manual for this machine says that I can make jam in here. It says I can make like pound cake, uh, maybe like cheesecake, things like that. I haven't tried doing any of those, so I can't speak to how well it does those things, but I, I might make another video where I kind of run through all the quirkier recipes in the manual. Let me know if you want to see that. So maybe it's not as single use as it sounds, but I kind of think those are just more gimmicky, kind of like how you can use an Instant Pot for making yogurt, but I would say probably 95% of Instant Pot users do not use the yogurt function. So ultimately it boils down to the way that you use it and the way that you cook. And finally, this is like, not a big deal, but some people might get very annoyed by it. And it's, you know, depending on my mood, I, I get irritated because of the way that the bread machine mixes the bread with this little like paddle down here. And even if you take this paddle out, there's still that little post. Your bread loaves, if you bake them in here, will have this unsightly little hole at the bottom. And that may bother some people. So if you don't want a hole in the bottom of your bread, you'll have to take the dough out and bake it in your oven, which for some people means it's not really worth it to just have this as a 
fancy stand mixer with a low capacity. So who is the bread maker good for? First off, if you love fresh bread and you're dedicated to fresh bread. I know I've seen that Japanese toaster oven that has the steam compartment and you whatever and you toast and it makes the perfect toasted pizza bread and that's like $300. If it came down to that appliance versus this one for me and I, I was a bread lover, which I am, I don't know, I'm speaking in hypotheticals, I would 100% go with the bread maker personally, personally. Those are for probably different audiences, but again, if it came down to it, that's what I would choose. This is a very personal one, but I'm so used to being the person who wakes up at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever to preheat the oven, bake the bread, shape the dough, whatever, and waking everyone else up in the house with fresh bread that I haven't really experienced it. I didn't grow up in a house where my, my parents baked bread or anything like that. So it has been really lovely to be able to wake up to the smell of fresh bread. Yeah, I, I mean, it's great. So if you're a baker and you've just, it's, it's like, it's kind of sounds sad, but that's actually, it's like a luxury. It's like, waking up to this aroma has been so luxurious and nice. I absolutely love it. So you can set a delay on this machine and depending on what type of bread you're making, like if it has eggs in it, you probably don't want to do this. But if it's egg free, you can set a timer and have the bread start baking and have it be done by 7am or whenever you wake up and you'll have a perfectly baked fresh loaf of bread. And that's magical. If you're a lazy baker, or you're becoming lazier like I am and you just want to set it and forget it, especially in terms of the kneading and proofing part of the equation, this is great. I don't know how to convey this. It sounds like such a small thing that it's replacing, but not having to go in and check and move the dough from one bowl to another bowl and cover it with a tea towel and blah, blah, blah. Removing those steps does make it a lot more convenient. Also specifically for the one pound and one and a half pound machines, if you want smaller quantities of bread, this is fantastic for that. I think sometimes I, you know, I have this like 18 inch long loaf pan for when I'm baking bread uh, in the oven and that sometimes is just too much bread. So the smaller capacity actually could be a, a big bonus for a lot of people. And I think like if you're really lazy about doing dishes, this is great. It's like a one bowl appliance. So. The big, big, big question. Do you need a bread maker? Should you get a bread maker? The answer is like, I can't answer that for you. Do you need one? Definitely not. You do not need a bread maker. If you're low on cash and you are thinking about whether you want to splurge on this thing, I honestly, I wouldn't if, if that's your position. If you like have, you know, some money burning a hole in your pocket and all those other benefits sound really great to you, go for it. I, like I said, I love it. But it's like one of those things where if I asked myself, could I imagine my life without this machine? The answer is yes, to be honest, <laughs> but I still really, really love it. So a couple considerations if you do decide to purchase a bread maker, just things to think about. First off is the capacity of your machine. I've, I've commented a couple times on this. This is a one pound machine. That's the smallest size you can get. One and a half is the most common or very common. Two pound is like getting on the bigger side. And I think the machine itself is going to be quite large, but just, you know, consider what makes the most sense for you. One pound is great for, again, one to two people. One and a half is probably great for someone with like one kid, maybe one or two kids. And then if you have like a family, you're probably going to want to go up to the two pound. Another setting to consider, well, it's not really a setting, but another functionality that this machine has that I don't think all machines have is this little device here that you can take out. I just found out. Um, and this will drop nuts or any type of mix in that you might want to add into your bread. I don't, oh, so you, you can open it up, put some nuts or chocolate chips or raisins or whatever into this little receptacle. And it makes a really scary, terrible noise when it releases it, but it drops those things in during like the second kneading cycle so that your mix-ins don't get mushed to a pulp. If you like bread with a lot of like stuff in it, then you'll definitely want to get one of these. It's also kind of tricky to put back in. Oh, never mind. The brand is also something I would consider. I, you know, I can only speak from my own experience and I haven't had a bunch of bread machines, but it's kind of like cars. You buy the Toyota if you want a car that's going to last like 300,000 miles or whatever. Zerji Rushi is the gold standard for kitchen appliances. If you speak to most Asian people, they'll agree with that. Zoji Rushi products last forever. I have a rice cooker from them I've had since 2000, 
nine. It's running great. I know people who have the Zojirushi water boilers in their kitchen from like 30 years ago working great. So if you can cough up the extra money, these aren't cheap. I think this one runs in like the 250 to 300 range. If you have the money and you can kind of like push it a little further, I, I, I personally am of the mindset that I like to buy the nicer appliance if I'm going to invest at all so that I know it'll last much longer. If you can't afford it, like, and you still want one, definitely by all means go for a cheaper brand. Just know that personally, I think Soju Rishi is like the most reliable one. So that's just my, my take on it. Keep in mind the counter space that this is going to require. The footprint of this machine is like, I'll turn it sideways. Ugh. I think this is about, you know, a foot deep by eight inches wide and it just fits under my countertops. So it's about maybe 16 inches tall or so. So it's a, it's a big machine. If you don't have the space, if you don't have the space, sorry. I'd also say like, think clearly about how often you're gonna use it. I use mine at least once a week, but I don't know if that's normal. So I think it's been worth it, especially because I didn't pay for it out of pocket, but I think it was worth it for my friends to buy this for me. So consider how often you're gonna use it as with all appliances, like if it's just gonna sit there, then maybe don't get one. And then the last thing is, you know, look into the customizability of the settings that you can do with the machine. So this machine is great because it has a bunch of different core settings as you can see here. So with different proof times and rising times, and you can set three custom cycles as well. So that's been really helpful, especially for instances where I'm not baking the bread in the machine and I'm just proving it. So check out the settings before you buy. I think at a minimum, you want that customization setting. And then I absolutely love the delay start. And I don't think all machines have that. Like I said, that's the key to waking up to fresh bread in the morning. So personally, if this machine didn't have that, my, my opinion of it would be much lower. That delayed start is incredible. So I would highly recommend that. And finally, my last tip for you is, and this is, I don't know, maybe not a great tip, but that friend of mine who was inspired to buy one of these, he was able to go on eBay, I think, and he found a 1980s Zoji Rishi bread maker for like $50 and it works incredibly well. And like I said, it has twice the capacity of mine and he is absolutely in love with it. So buy used buy a used machine, even if it's old, worst case it breaks, but you at least get to see if it was like worth it for you or if you like, like it. I'm sure there's tons of bread machines at thrift stores and things like that. Just make sure that it has all the components you need. So you need the bucket, you need the paddle attachment. You know, a lot of these or all of these have nonstick coating, which I don't love, but it is what it is. So double check in like the photos or if it's at a thrift store that the nonstick coating isn't too scratched up because one, it won't work, and two, it's not good for you. So if you stuck around this long, I'm gonna show you now what it looks like to bake a loaf of bread with this machine so you can see what the output is. I know I've been talking a lot about it, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So starting off, I'm just feeding my sourdough starter here, so I'm getting rid of the discard and putting that in my big pile of discard. And then I like to just weigh out a random amount of water. I actually feed my starter very little and I use very little to kind of make the next round of starter. So I usually do anywhere between 25 and 35 grams of both water and a half and half all-purpose flour and whole wheat flour mixture. Then I get the bucket ready to go. I put the paddle in and add my sourdough discard. I'm using the recipe from King Arthur Flour here, so I'll link that in the description below. And I just add a little bit of water, and then the way that this kind of works is you want to put the wet ingredients in first and then layer on the flour. So you're kind of creating this two compartment divide. And then into the top of the flour, I'll make these little compressions or depressions, I guess. And I'll add the yeast, sugar, and salt. And then this recipe requires a little bit of fat. You can do butter, you can do oil. I use some olive oil here. Then you'll just lock that into place into the machine. And I'll close the machine. In this case, I use one of the homemade settings. So 
I have two very long knead cycles and two very long rise cycles followed by a very long bake. All of these instructions are in the King Arthur recipe as well, so you can check that there. And then I just hit start. So in this case, I did not use the delay cycle because I wanted to just have bread right away. I have made this sourdough recipe with the delay, but you'll see here, I checked on it every now and again to see how it was rising. And you can also hear that the machine is quite quiet as well, which is great. And here we're on to the rising cycle and now it's baking. So obviously you can't smell or feel it, but it is warm. I tried to catch the tail end of the little song that the Zojirishi plays at the end, but only got a little bit of it. And here's the loaf you end up with. So like I said, it's quite small. You can see how big it is compared to my hands. I do have large hands, but it's really small. So we ended up getting about one and a half days out of this bread, but you can see how nice and soft and squishy the texture is. There's really nothing better than fresh bread. Crispy, it has a crispy outside, soft, tender inside. Really great sandwich loaf. And that's it. That's all my thoughts on bread makers for now. Let me know if you have any questions and of course, like and subscribe. This is my first YouTube video. Let me know if there's anything I uh, should do differently, but um, thanks for joining me.